A twisty tendril of vapor in white to red amber was seen sneaking behind a bright white light in parts of South Korea's sky on Friday evening. For more than 20 years, the International Space Station has served as a continuously inhabited foothold in low Earth orbit, allowing space agencies worldwide to study how humans live off the Earth for extended periods. However, it needs to be clarified that the station will last that long. Recently, it has sprung a series of controversies, and astronauts have started reporting the presence of some unidentified flying objects. These sightings have been claimed as evidence for alien visits by some UFOologists. But why would UFOs visit the ISS? What exactly are these things? Let's watch together till the end to find out. The most significant structure humans have ever placed in space is the International Space Station, ISS. The station underwent continuous evolution to accommodate new missions and experiments, with most of its primary construction being finished between 1998 in 2011. It has been continuously inhabited since November 2, 2000. Since then, the station has been continuously inhabited for 22 years and some days, breaking the previous record set by the Mir space station. This makes the station the longest continuously occupied human presence in low Earth orbit. A little more than 10 years after the installation of the last significant expansion, Leonardo, in 2011, the most recent large pressurized module, NACA, was added. The station is still being built and put together. In 2016, an experimental inflatable housing was added. Starting in 2021, numerous significant new Russian components were launched. The station's operating permission was extended from January 2022 to 2030. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein said that given their budget constraints, they wanted to go to the Moon and Mars, and they needed to commercialize low Earth orbit and go on to the next step. There have been calls to privatize ISS operations after that to pursue future Moon and Mars missions. The International Space Station is run by a multinational collaboration of five space organizations, representing 15 nations. Seven multinational crew members live and work in orbit around the Earth every 90 minutes at a speed of 5 miles per second. Occasionally, Extra people are on board the station when the crew changes. The space station circles the planet 16 times in 24 hours, passing through 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets. The station has more space than a six-bedroom apartment, six sleeping quarters, two bathrooms, a gym, and a 360-degree view bay window. The astronauts exercise for at least two hours each day to prevent the human body's muscle and bone mass loss while in microgravity. Astronauts and cosmonauts often carry out spacewalks for space station construction, upkeep, and improvements. The solar array's wingspan is longer than an Airbus A380, the most extended passenger plane in the world. 42 assembly flights were used to carry the station's significant modules and other components, including 37 trips on American space shuttles and five trips on Russian Proton Soyuz rockets. The space station's electrical power system is connected via eight kilometers of cable. The 55-foot-long robotic Canadarm2 moves complete modules, installs research experiments, and even transfers astronauts doing spacewalks. It has seven distinct joints and two end defectors or hands. The space station can simultaneously link with eight spacecraft. A spaceship may leave the Earth and reach the space station in as little as four hours. Science cargo and supplies are delivered by four distinct cargo spacecraft. The Russian Progress, Northrop Grumman's Cygnus, SpaceX's Dragon, and JAXA's HTV. The station exceeds 90% of the Earth's population throughout its orbit, and astronauts shoot millions of pictures of the Earth below. In addition to particle physics experiments like the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer O2, Earth monitoring tools, payloads for materials science, and other research payloads may all be housed outside the station at once. The trip from the space station to the moon and back takes roughly a day. With the water recovery system, 
the crew needs just one-third of a gallon of water each day, instead of one gallon that the cargo ship would typically provide. About 350,000 sensors are monitored by on-orbit software to ensure the station's and crew's well-being and safety. The interior pressurized volume of the space station is equivalent to a Boeing 747. More than 50 computers manage the systems on board the space station, and more than 1.5 million lines of software code are supported by over 3 million lines of software code on the ground. The ISS comprises several cutting-edge high-tech components, but another group of those components, the cameras, draws attention because of the capabilities they provide the space station. Four cameras on the ISS enable fans to monitor events occurring nearby as part of the CR-3 mission. Four high-definition EarthView cameras were sent into orbit on April 2014 and docked with the International Space Station. The European Space Agency's Columbus Lab, a large chrome module added to the space station in 2008, was equipped with three cameras housed within a protective box. Columbus's eye is the aggregate name for the four cameras. In cooperation with the German Space Agency, the University of Bonn in Germany runs a live streaming website. The Columbus Eye Initiative was rejected. The cameras stream to Earth from the space station's computer through an Ethernet wire. The cameras have an interesting dual use. In addition to transmitting images to people on Earth, NASA also uses them to measure the rate of picture deterioration brought on by cosmic radiation and the durability of the camera housing. Pressurized and temperature-controlled cages shield the cameras from high space radiation rates. How they work may inform engineers at NASA about the best kinds of cameras to utilize on subsequent missions. However, due to its position and function as a space agency, it has been accused of purposely turning off these cameras during live broadcasting when they transmit what it doesn't want you to see. The agency has been accused of censoring the information it makes available to the public. A UFO hunter claimed to have seen 10 UFOs while watching NASA's live video. The reports were provided by a guy named Jeff. He caught 10 unidentified objects floating around the ISS while watching NASA Live. Jeff uploaded a screenshot of the image when the ISS was flying over the South Atlantic. He shared the screenshot with a YouTube user named Michael, who calls himself a full-time Earth watchman who monitors changes that occur on and around the Earth to uncover hidden causes for various events. Since then, a screenshot has gained popularity, gaining tens of millions of views. This occurrence reminds people of the fabled mental episode that influenced conversations about UFOs for a long time. Businessman Kenneth Arnold reported seeing a group of nine fast-moving objects near Mount Rainier in Washington while piloting his tiny aircraft in 1947 when the first well-known UFO event occurred. The crescent-shaped objects, according to Arnold, traveled at a speed of several thousand miles per hour, like saucers skipping on the water. The UFOs were incorrectly described as having a saucer-like form in the newspaper article that followed, giving rise to the phrase flying saucer. As reports of unexplained aerial phenomena mounted, the U.S. Air Force launched Project Sign in 1948 to investigate them. Although some experts hypothesized that UFOs may have been spaceships from other planets, the first assessment of those associated with the study was that UFOs are likely advanced Soviet aircraft. In less than a year, Project Sign was suspended by Project Grudge. In turn, it was replaced near 1952 by Project Blue Book the official investigation of UFOs that lasted the longest and was based at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. More than 12,000 sightings have been reported to Project Blue Book within 17 years. Each of these reports was finally categorized as identified with recognized astronomical, atmospheric, or artificial phenomenon unidentified. The examples in the second group which comprised around 6% of the total, lacked enough details to accurately identify a recognized phenomenon. The UFO phenomenon has become an obsession in America. A series of alarming radar and optical sightings were reported close to National Airport in Washington, D.C. during the humid summer of 1952. Not everyone agreed with these occurrences' explanations, 
although temperature inversions in the city's air were to blame. In the meanwhile, there have been an unprecedented increase in UFO reports. The U.S. government set up an expert group of scientists to look into the phenomenon after being prompted by the Central Intelligence Agency to do so. The panel, which comprised other physicists, an astronomer, and a rocket engineer, was led by H.P. Robertson, a physicist at California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. The panel conveyed for three days of interviews with military commanders and the Project Blue Book director. They also looked at UFO-related videos and images. They concluded that there was no obvious security threat and no evidence to support the extraterrestrial hypothesis. 90% of the sightings could be easily attributed to astronomical and meteorological phenomena. Parts of the panel's findings were kept under wraps until 1979, and this protracted period of secrecy further fueled the speculations that the administration was covering something up. At the Air Force's request, a second committee was formed in 1966 to examine the most intriguing information obtained by Project Blue Book. The conclusions of this committee's two-year inquiry into some UFO encounters were published as scientific study of unidentified flying objects, widely known as the Condon Report. After the committee's physicist leader, Edward U. Condon, a National Academy of Sciences special committee examined the Condon Report. The paper, which detailed examinations of 59 UFO incidents, was written by 37 scientists. The group came to the same conclusion as the Robertson panel. There was no proof in any accounts of anything more than typical occurrences, and additional research into UFOs was unnecessary. Project Blue Book was dismantled in 1969 as a result of this and a drop in sightings. Despite the extraterrestrial hypothesis inability to gain traction with the expert committees, a few scientists and engineers, most notably J. Allen Hynek, an astronomer at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, who was involved with the sign, Grudge, and Project Blue Book, concluded that a small percentage of the most trustworthy UFO reports provided concrete evidence for the presence of extraterrestrial visitors. The Center for UFO Studies, which Hynek created, is still investigating the issues. The Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, AATIP, a covert service, was another significant American investigation of UFO encounters. The assertion that the U.S. government had alloys and chemicals allegedly obtained from unidentified flying objects was the most sensational component of the AATIP when it was made public in December 2017. However, many scientists are dubious about this claim. Apart from American attempts, the only other official and relatively comprehensive records of UFO encounters were held in Canada. These documents were transferred from the Canadian Department of National Defense to the Canadian National Research Council in 1968. The data from Canada included roughly 750 encounters. Less comprehensive records have been kept in the UK, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, and Greece. The Mutual UFO Network in Bellevue, Colorado, and KUFOS continue to record sightings reported by the general public in the United States. UFO sightings in the Soviet Union were often brought on by the testing of classified military missiles. The government sometimes promoted the idea that these rockets may be alien objects to conceal the actual origin of the experiments. Finally, it determined that the descriptions themselves might reveal too much information. Similar military action hidden from the public has caused UFO sightings in China. However, we are coming closer to learn the facts about UFOs from reliable sources. It appears that authorities are still looking into UFO reports. With expertise spanning physics to astrobiology, 
NASA has assembled the first panel of its type to look into what the agency refers to as Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAPs. The 16-member group will conduct the probe purely using declassified sightings and other data acquired from civilian, government, and business sectors. Before recommending a possible roadmap for UAP data analysis by the agency moving forward, the panel will spend nine months creating its own strategy for organizing study sightings. Although NASA will deliver its initial study in May 2023, other federal agencies are also looking into UFOs and UAPs. The investigation by NASA is separate from the one formally established by the Pentagon, which has been working with U.S. intelligence to improve its ability to identify unknown objects. We've come to the end of this video. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting, kindly hit the like button and tell others about it. Remember to subscribe to our channel to see more of our incredible videos. We also have other videos selected just for you. Do well to check them out. Until the next video, take care.